Hi there. Um, I've had a few people ask me what sort of setup I'm running um, in terms of my solar uh, heating, etc. So I just wanted to give you a brief tour of my garage uh, where everything's installed. So for heating, uh, I've just got a gas boiler, Worcester Bosch. Uh, it's a 30 kilowatt unit, massively oversized um, for the house. Um, it's running uh, something called Priority Domestic Hot Water. So I basically have a, a temperature for the radiators and a temperature for the hot water. So I'm able to run two different flow temperatures. Um, connected to that, I have uh, a, an ESP EMS gateway. So that's basically connected to the, the digital interface uh, on the boiler. Um, and that just provides loads of information about the boiler into into home assistant so i can see the power um the flow temperature uh, uh the, uh, the 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 speed of the circulation pumps it, it it gives loads and loads of metrics not all of them are kind of useful but um certainly the power usage um is quite good and it also allows me to adjust the flow temperature um i was using that um to, to sort of give me pseudo priority domestic hot water um, until I tried a, a, a trick where you install uh, a resistor into the, the boiler itself, which fools it into thinking it's got full priority domestic hot water. Um, I have a temperature probe for monitoring the ambient temperature in the garage. And then I've got two other probes attached to the flow and return. There's a little black box up here somewhere. Um, so this, this little box just holds um, an ESP home, an ESP32, or an ESP8266, I think, um, and that just provides Home Assistant with access to those three measures, which is really useful. Uh, following the heating pipes around, uh, we come down to, um, yeah, I'll probably just go to the heating. So at the moment, I'm using uh, Tado to, for my sort of thermostat control. So I've got a, a, a Tado wireless extension up there. Uh, that's for the, the radiators. Um, and then down here, I've got another one, which is for the underfloor heating, um, which I've had recently installed. So that's just three loops. Uh, there's no zoning on it. Uh, and the pump is just set at a, a current, a kind of constant, um, constant velocity. This is set to about, f it's about 45, give or take, um, which is the flow temperature I run my boiler at. So that minimizes the amount of mixing that this thing has to do. I, I probably could have done away with the mixer completely, but um, I wanted to be sure that if I, when it's very cold, sometimes the boiler will go up to 50. Um, it's very rare that I do that, but I just wanted to um, to have that in place in case I needed to do that. Uh, attached to the flow, um, we also have a, a flow sensor, the noisiest flow sensor in the world, um, and that's connected to an ESP8266, which again provides that information via ESP Home into my Home Assistant. Um, there's a zone valve for the underflow heating, so I can turn that on itself. Got a zone valve for the radiators, uh, which again, um, I, can, I can operate um, independently. Um, I am planning to ditch the Tado. I'm going to install my own control system, just using a, an open source thermostat system. Um, and I'll cover that in another video. Uh, that then sort of brings me on neatly then to my Mixergy tank. So this is a, it's kind of a smart tank um, and it uses something called volumetric heating. So what that means is it heats the water from the top down um, and then it has a very nifty little display on the front, which tells you how much hot water you've got installed in the tank, which is phenomenally useful, especially with kids, and bath times and everything else like that. Um, I've written an integration myself uh, which allows me to extract all this information from the Mixergy 
uh, and again put that into home assistant so i'm able to i'm able to monitor that and and uh, control the charging and that stuff from home assistant uh swinging around i think i'll go past the eddy i'll come back to that then that brings me on to my solex inverter so i've had solar pv installed back in january it's been yeah really happy with it so this is a solex uh, hybrid inverter uh, it's 3.6 kilowatts um, and then that is connected to uh, 4.8 kilowatts of solar panels which come down from the roof um, attached to that is a solex battery that's a 5.8 kilowatt hour battery uh, which is been a game changer um, in terms of load shifting and just reducing the amount we import from the grid. Um, I do a little bit of sort of load shifting, so I charge the, the, the battery from anywhere from 20% to maybe 40% um, based on the solar forecast for the next day. Uh, so at the moment, as it's been really sunny, it's just charging to 20 and that just gives me enough juice then to run the house from half five when the off peak ends to when the solar basically matches the house's load, which is sort of between kind of about half eight now at the moment. Uh, attached to that and hidden in this little box um, is the is a Tygo cloud logger. So I'm using optimizers on my panels. Um, because there's some shadowing from chimneys and shadowing from the side of the house and in addition I just wanted to be able to access that information so the guy very kindly installed um, a Tygo cloud logger which just sends all the the information up to the cloud. Um, not integrated that into Home Assistant or anything yet but I do check it periodically. Uh, one of the main benefits I think will be it'll highlight me to any issues with individual panels and my son is about to run in so I'm going to stop here and back so that kind of covers my my solar setup um, which then brings me to my eddy I had this installed about seven weeks ago six seven weeks ago or rather I said I installed it myself seven weeks ago um, and this is a solar diverter, so it, it basically takes any excess solar and just sends it into the hot water tank using the um, element on the side. This this has been a, a great addition. Um, so before I had this installed, uh, what I was finding was when the excess solar was only, we'll say maybe a kilowatt or 500 watts, it wasn't enough to start charging uh, my electric car. Uh, there's like a limit on electric cars, so you need to have 1.4 kilowatts minimum before the car will start charging. Uh, during April, um, we've, uh, you know, even during February, March, it just, it wasn't enough. There just wasn't enough solar uh, being produced, but I had a surplus. So it meant that I was exporting data, uh, exporting energy, sorry, which I didn't really need to be exporting. So I bought an eddy, installed it, and since then uh, it's provided us with so much hot water. So you can see now at the moment, um, there's 1.3 kilowatts, 1.2 kilowatts going in. So the sun will start to go down, it's five o'clock now. And if this was surplus, the car, it just would stop charging the car. So this uh, unit is, is really good. It can go as low as, I think, 100 watts, uh, which is fantastic. So it can basically mop up most surplus um, and put it in. So, uh, yeah, I've been really, really happy with this. Um, there needs to be this PV switch. This is something that comes from Mixergy itself. So I had to buy one of them and install it. And it's, it's just so that the Mixergy knows when there's a solar surplus going into the tank for its uh, destratification pump and stuff like that uh, so that's the eddy that's kind of everything there that brings me over then to my my phenomenally messy comms closet um, so this was one of the I, mean, I guess like the first thing that I had put in uh, so this has got some 
uh, Ubiquity gear in here. So I've got a, a Ubiquity Dream Machine, which is connected to the internet. So that provides um, storage for my cameras um, and the usual firewall business. Then I've got a 24 port the Unify switch, PoE switch. Uh, so that runs off to lots of different gadgets, the, the Wi-Fi points, etc. in the house. Actually, if I open that, yeah, that's much better. Um, so I put the patch panel in myself and everything. That was probably a bit, bit pointless because <laughs> I don't really move things around, but it was just something I wanted to do. Um, that's all connected. And then there's a myriad of different bits and bobs in here. So I've got a small Dell Ultra Form Factor PC that runs my Home Assistant, Node Red, Tesla Mate, all sorts of software for managing the house is running on that. You can see then as my my energy hub. So that basically connects the Zappy and the Eddy to the internet. Uh, there's a little do down there. That's the Tado internet gateway as it's called. And then nestled behind that, that little black box, uh, that's for my uh, underfloor heating in the bathroom that's a, a, a gateway that allows me to, to access that hub uh, remotely uh, that was a bit of a bit of a splurge purchase I think and then at the bottom then there's a distribution unit for the coax and then a couple of plugs at the back so that so that's kind of covers everything that's in there uh, perched up top then that's a, a 3g modem uh, and that provides uh, failover should the internet go back up so the the um, the unified gear will, will switch over um it's only happened once in the two years i've been with zen which is phenomenally good um and that kind of brings me over then to the consumer unit so there's still a bit of work to do on this it's a bit of a mess um in terms of the wiring and stuff like that because i've just had it rewired but there's a couple of little things just to point out. Um, this box out of the way. So the first one here is a that's a Shelly EM. So that's got a little clamp connected on there. So that just provides information about the power consumption of the house. That is literally one of the first things I added, um, so I could get a handle on kind of power consumption, just get an idea what it was. Then in here, this is, I think is quite interesting. So in here, there's a Shelly PM, uh, which is connected to the dual fuel towel rail in the bathroom. So the guys kindly wired that up for me. So it means I can switch the towel rail on uh, remotely. Well, because I say remotely, I can switch it on from here. Um, and I basically have it on a little timer. So when I do need to switch it on, I can push a button in Home Assistant and it will switch it on for an hour. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, then I've got these, got these little guys hanging out here. So they're EM clamps, um, or CT clamps rather, that are inside the, uh, the fuse board or the consumer unit. Um, and I'm going to wire them up to an open energy mod uh, setup, which I have yet to add. Uh, and that's it. Uh, I mean, outside on the wall, there's a, a zappy um, up at the top there. You can see, oh yeah, you can see that little that little disc, that little white blob. Um, that's a Unify access point. Um, I've just temporarily put it up there so the car can get access to the internet. Um, but I have two of them in the house um, as well. And that's yeah, that's about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's it, yeah. So if anyone has any questions or comments, yeah, please leave them in the comments below. Yeah, if you like this video, yeah, please like, please press like um, and subscribe if you want to see uh, some of my other videos that are coming up. Yeah, so hopefully you found that entertaining. And yeah, that's it. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.